Hello, today we're going to continue our discussion of PCS, learning the guidelines. The first podcast I created was about the convention, so now we're going to continue looking at the guidelines. This first podcast is part one, guideline B2.1a through B3.5. You may recall from my first podcast on the conventions, these podcasts I have created do not replace the Haugen Academy modules. They supplement them. I repeat the guidelines that they have talked about, but I give you examples of those guidelines and walk you through how to create a code. Along the way, I'm going to be giving you hints about finding things. So so really, you need both sets of podcasts to get the most out of the course. First guideline is B2.1a, General Anatomic Regions. If you look at your table of contents or at the tabs along the edge of your PCS codebook, The first three quarters of the tables are about body systems that you might recognize the name. And then you get to the general anatomic regions and the upper extremity regions and lower extremity regions. These tables are here because there are times that procedures are performed on regions rather than specific body parts. And the general anatomic regions to me is kind of a catch-all that I have to refer to it several times to remember what's in it. So I've chosen this procedure because it was one that threw me in the very beginning when I was a coding student, the procedure being an episiotomy. This episiotomy is when the female perineum is cut in order to give the baby more room to get through the birth canal. So when we look at a building a PCS code, we're going to ask ourselves several questions. What is the intent of the procedure? What root operation describes what's happening? Where is it taking place, body system and body part? What would the approach be? Is there a device? Is there a qualifier? When I first started coding, qualifier really threw me. But what we just need to remember is a qualifier is defined differently in every table. So you really can't tell until you get to the table what your qualifier choices might be. When you're building a code, the first thing you want to do is figure out what table you want to get to. And you're going to do that by figuring out the body system and the root operation. You can also use your index in some cases, in most cases, but I prefer to use the tables and I'm going to show you mostly the way I do it, how to find a table. We can certainly refer to the index whenever you want to, to see if it helps you find your way. So when we're building this code, we've talked about the intent, the body part, and what body system would we find the female perineum. When I first began to code, I went automatically to the female reproductive table. It's not there. It is in the anatomic regions. So to help me remember that, I made a note in the female reproductive body system that tells me that female perineum is found in the anatomical regions general table. I suggest that you do that until you can remember that the female perineum is in that general anatomic regions table. What root operation describes the procedure? That would be division. When you read through the full definition of all the root operations, division fits the bill here. Cutting into a body part without draining fluids or gases in order to separate the body part. And the further explanation is all or a portion of the body part is separated into two or more portions. Basically, you're cutting a perineum. You're cutting a body part in order to allow the baby more room to come through the birth canal. What would the approach be? It would be external because the doctor can see the female perineum. He doesn't need a scope. He doesn't need any kind of visual tool. He can see it without any assistance. There's no device or qualifier that we know of. And as I mentioned earlier, we would have to get to the table to see if there were even any options. And when we get to this table here with the med surge anatomical regions general table, with division as your root operation, there are no options for device or qualifier. So they're, they are in A at this point. So here's your table filled out, your blanks filled out. And here is a screenshot of the code book. At the very bottom of the page, you see there a division. And female perineum is the only body part in that table in the general anatomic regions. So just above that, I wanted to bring to your attention with the root operation creation where the physician is creating a penis or a vagina for those individuals undergoing sex change operations. You see the only two body parts there are the male perineum and the female perineum. 
Again, I suggest that you would write in the female reproductive table and the male reproductive table that the creation of these body parts is found in the general anatomic regions. Maybe that wouldn't throw you, but it certainly threw me when I first started looking at this. Guideline B2.1b is about upper and lower body parts, and the PCS classification defines upper and lower as above or below the diaphragm. If you look at the illustrations in the code book for the upper vein and lower vein, you see that the diaphragm is the, is the cutoff part there on the upper veins and the lower veins as well. You can tell where the PCS tables draw the line there at the diaphragm. And then the bottom screenshot is from the Haugen Academy module. Same thing, showing you upper and lower with the diaphragm being your dividing point. Guideline B3.1a says, in order to determine the appropriate root operation, the full definition as contained in the tables must be applied. We say that because it's pretty easy to take a piece of this root operation and a piece of that root operation that you think describes what's going on. You can't do that. You have to take the root operation's full definition in order to assign your root operation. So let's give us some examples here. The operative report stated the patient's right arm had been amputated by farm machinery. The surgeon stated she, quote, repositioned the patient's right arm, reconnecting nerve and blood supply, end of quote. Remember that the physician does not have to say exactly what the PCS codebook says. The coder determines the root operation by looking at what the physician is describing and applying the full definition of the root operation. So when the coder looks at the full definitions of the root operations reposition and reattachment, the coder knows that while the surgeon is using the word repositioned, what she actually did was reattach the arm because she talks about reconnecting the nerve and blood supply. Here's another example of guideline B3.1a the patient is admitted for a right total knee replacement. In the operative report, the surgeon dictated, quote, the right knee was cleansed, prepped, and resected in preparation for the synthetic substitute prosthesis with cement. Note that the surgeon stated she resected the knee in preparation for the prosthesis. Well, the coder knows that for resection, the full definition of resection is cutting out or off without replacement, all of a body part. And since the knee is being replaced in this procedure, resection is not the correct root operation. If we read the full definition of the root operation replacement, it says putting in or on biologic or synthetic material that physically takes the place and or function of all or a portion of a body part. So the correct root operation for a knee replacement is replacement. And I showed you here on the little table what the PCS code would be, and how you would build it. A knee replacement would be obviously be a lower joint. That's your body system. We know it's the right knee, so the right knee joint is your body part. It would have to be an open approach because of what they're doing with a knee replacement. The operative report tells us it was a, it was a synthetic substitute, so that's your device. The operative report also says it was with cement, so that is your qualifier. And that helps you answer all the questions you need to answer to build the code for a knee replacement. The next one is guideline B3.1b, which states procedural steps necessary to reach the operative site and close the operative site, including an estimosis of a tubular body part, are not coded separately. So the procedure I've chosen to illustrate this is the patient had both breasts removed due to a strong family history of breast cancer. Incisions were made from the axilla to the midsternum. The breasts were removed and staples were used to close both incision sites. Steps necessary to reach the operative site, like incisions or the introduction of ports for endoscopic procedures are not coded separately. Only the resection of the bilateral breast is coded. And there I have the PCS code and I've shown you in the screenshot of the table that there is a body part for bilateral breast. This procedure would be done uh, it's called a prophylactic breast removal. When you've got that strong family history and the patients choose just to remove the breast to, to decrease their chances of having breast cancer. The next few guidelines talk about multiple procedures. 
guideline B3.2a, multiple procedures are coded if the same root operation is performed on different body parts as defined by distinct values of the body part character. So many times when I read a guideline like this, it's just, the, it's so wordy, and I guess it has to be. It makes so much sense to give you examples that tell you why you would need a guideline like this. So the procedure is excision of polyps during a colonoscopy, two from the sigmoid colon, one from the descending colon, all sent to pathology to rule out cancer. So following that guideline, how many codes would be assigned? And the answer is two. So let me show you why the answer is two. When you look in the table there, the sigmoid colon and the descending colon have different body part values. So every character in the PCS code would be the same except for that fourth character body part value. So I have the codes written there. And I also wanted to say, you see where the seventh character X is there? That diagnostic qualifier is used because the surgeon said all were sent to pathology to rule out cancer. Things can be removed and aren't diagnostic. So really you have to read the operative report to find out what the doctor's intent was. And in this case, we were told they were sent to rule out cancer. But I also want you to note there on my on the right hand side of the screen, the last paragraph, if only some of those polyps were sent to pathology, that would change your code. For example, if only the sigmoid colon polyps were sent to pathology, they would have the seventh character X and the descending colon would not. So you really have to carefully read your operative reports to be sure all the polyps were sent to pathology or only some of them. You see the importance, I'm sure, as we move forward of how important it is for a doctor to dictate a very clear operative report. Guideline B3.2b, multiple procedures are coded if the same root operation is repeated in multiple body parts, and those body parts are separate and distinct body parts classified to a single PCS body part value. Boy, that's a lot of words. What it's basically telling you is when you look at body parts, you'll see different terms under the body part, and all those terms are included in that body part value. So the best way to explain this is through a procedure. If we're looking at the excision of the sartorius muscle and the gracilis muscle, I have an image there that's reproduced that you can see those two muscles there in the upper leg. When you go through your questions that you would ask yourself, the intent of the procedure is to remove part of those two muscles. If you remove part of something, it's excision, is your reoperation. So it's definitely a muscles body system. And when you look at the upper leg muscles, you see that sartorius and gracilis are both listed under upper leg muscles. The approach is open, no device, the qualifier is these are diagnostic because the procedure description says they are diagnostic. When you look at the two fill in the blank tables I have there, you can see it's the same code because they're both in the upper leg muscle. So you would report that same code twice and that would account for the excision of those two muscles that are both found in the upper leg. It's very Easy to miss that, but if you look at what's under your body part value, it will really help you figure out why you need a guideline like this. While I'm thinking of it, if I haven't mentioned this already, when I use that green highlighter there, I'm trying to get you used to thinking about identifying in an operative report what procedures would have to be coded. And as I'm going to teach you, I use the, the color green to highlight that because it just helps me know when I finish reading through an operative report, I can quickly see what I need to go back and code. Here's another one. The guideline multiple procedures are coded if multiple root operations are performed on the same body part. So you've got the example I've given you here, destruction of a sigmoid lesion and release of adhesions in the sigmoid colon open approach. The two root operations we're looking at are destruction and release. 
and you're going to code them there using sigmoid colon as your body part. But you see there are two different codes because you've got two different root operations. Guideline B3.2D says multiple procedures are coded if the intended root operation is attempted using one approach, but is converted to a different approach. Laparoscopic cholecystectomy converted to an open cholecystectomy. Laparoscopic implies per percutaneous endoscopic approach. So what I would do, make yourself a note wherever you need to in your code book, laparoscopic equals percutaneous endoscopic approach. That way you'll know. So when you're coding a cholecystectomy, the root operation is the same. It's resection for both, but the approach is different. The approach for the laparoscopic is percutaneous endoscopic. The approach for the open cholecystectomy is open, requiring two codes. So it's a single OR visit, but two different procedures were done when the laparoscopic cholecystectomy was converted to an open. Guideline B3.3, if the intended procedure is discontinued or otherwise not completed, you're going to code the procedure to the root operation performed. So if it's discontinued before any other procedure is performed, you're going to code inspection of the body part or the anatomical region inspected. The procedure I've given you here to explain this is a planned aortic valve replacement procedure is discontinued after the initial thoracotomy and before any incision is made in the heart muscle. The patient had become hemodynamically unstable. So you're going to code an open inspection of the mediastinum. The mediastinum is what you would see if you cut into the chest, that initial thoracotomy. The fact that it's cut into tells you it's going to be an open approach. And then we have to figure out where the mediastinum is. And I've shown you here on the screenshot of the general anatomic regions table, you see mediastinum there. But I also want to talk for a bit about how you might figure out where that mediastinum is. This is one time when the index is helpful. When you look up in the index here, that word mediastinoscopy which is exactly going into that mediastinum. The difference is in this term that we're looking at in the index, the mediastinoscopy, that is not an open approach. That is a percutaneous endoscopic approach. So you've got to be careful when you're trying to figure out what table to go to. Don't just automatically choose that PCS code because that's not correct. What you're looking for are those first three characters, that OWJ, that was what will help you get to the mediastinum. Then you can start from there what your approach would be and the device qualifier, etc. Here's the PCS code for open inspection of the mediastinum. I'm showing you a screenshot of that table with inspection as your root operation. And I've also filled in the blank there in that little blue box. It's to show you what each character would be. Here guideline B3.4a, biopsy procedures are coded using root operations excision, extraction, or drainage, and the qualifier diagnostic. This is here, this guideline is here because there is no biopsy root operation. So here is an example, fine needle aspiration of fluid in the right lung, biopsy taken to rule out cancer. What is the intent of the procedure? The intent is to drain fluid. So the root operation is drainage. Where is it taking place? This is another one of those tricky ones, but when you are draining fluid, you're not actually going into the lung, so it's not part of the respiratory system. You are actually draining fluid from the pleural cavity, and our procedures tell us it was on the right lung, so you're going to go into the pleural cavity on the right. The approach is percutaneous. Device none, qualifier diagnostic, and there is your code. This is an example where the physician said aspiration of fluid in the right lung, but the coder knows that that doesn't happen. You don't stick a needle in the right lung to drain fluid. You go into the pleural cavity, and the pleural cavity is located in the anatomic regions. 
I encourage you when you are watching these podcasts, go through them several times because We are both visual and oral learners. We have to see things and we have to hear things to help us remember them. And this is an example where the more you hear things like what I just said, when you're aspirating fluid, you're not going to actually go into a lung. You're going to go into a pleural cavity. If you were doing uh, something that actually took lung tissue, that's different. That's not a fine needle aspiration. So you're going to learn to read these operative reports and figure out what you're going to code. Guideline B3.4b says if a diagnostic excision extraction or drainage procedure is followed by a more definitive procedure, such as destruction, excision, or resection, at the same site, both the biopsy and the more definitive treatment are coded. For example, if a surgeon were going in to look and see if something looks suspicious and finds that it is suspicious and decides to go ahead and either destroy the lesion or remove the body part or part of the body part, then you're going to code both the biopsy and the procedure. So what we're going to look at is biopsy of the left breast, percutaneous approach, followed by a partial mastectomy open approach, same site, both the biopsy and the partial mastectomy procedure are coded. So here I've shown you the little blue boxes with the fill in the blank. The screenshot of the code book is the partial mastectomy. And you see a partial mastectomy is a root operation excision because the entire breast was not removed, only a part of it. Guideline B3.5 says if the root operations excision, repair, or inspection are performed on overlapping layers of the musculoskeletal system, the body part specifying the deepest layer is coded. So an example of that procedure might be when the patient has an excisional debridement of a right leg wound through the skin, subcutissue, fascia, and three centimeters into the peroneus longus muscle open approach. So what is the root operation? Well, you're taking out part of that muscle. So it's going to be excision. And I give you a hint here in the index where you look under debridement and you see there's excisional debridement and non-excisional debridement. If it's excisional debridement, then excision is your root operation. If it's non-excisional, extraction would be. This would be when you might use suction, for example, to go in and take out something that would be non-excisional. So let's just look at this procedure and figure out how we might build a code around that. We know that excision is a root operation, and we know from this guideline that the deepest layer is what we're going to code. In this case, it's the muscle. So now what's the body part? The perineus longus muscle. We have to figure out where that muscle is located. The first step is to determine which table you're going to be building your code. What we know so far is it is the muscle body system with a root operation of excision. It's an open approach. We don't know anything yet. And so we're going to look for where that body part might be. When you're looking for a body part, don't forget about the images, the illustrations that are in your PCS codebook. You can also look in an anatomy textbook or on Google Images. You can also just read the list of muscles under the upper leg and lower leg in the muscle body system table and look for that particular muscle. And looking in that table, we see that the perineus longus muscle is in the lower leg body part. The procedure is on the right lower leg, so the character is S for your fourth character. And I've plugged in the values there into that little table showing you each of the seven characters and what it might be in this case. I also want to show you on the screenshot here of this table, you see where I've written myself a little note, and it's referring to a different guideline, but it is a guideline that's talking about fingers and toes. We'll talk about that in another podcast, but I, you'll probably see as you look at screenshots, I write in my codebook. It is a tool that I use, and the more often I see something, the better it is I'm going to remember it. This is the end of this podcast, looking at guidelines B2 through B3.5, also building PCS codes. We'll continue our study with part two.